visited Sasebo City in Nagasaki Prefecture. Hello. Hello. I'm Michelle. I'm Kakimoto. Today's Takumi is Keita Kakimoto. The company where the Takumi works mainly develops electronic circuit appliances for fax machines. I've heard that you've developed a product with some connection to fruit. What did you make? Yes. This is it right here. What do you think it is? Mm, it's hard to say. There's a button, so it could be a remote control, but it also resembles a telephone too. What is this? I will tell you the answer at a different place. Please. And the place that the Takumi took me was a farm. The Japanese pears look delicious. They really do. By the way, Michelle, wouldn't you like to know in advance if this pear is really good or not? That would be nice, but how? I'll show you. Let's pick this pair and take it over there for testing. The device that the Takumi developed is a saccharimeter, which measures the concentration of sugar in fruit. Now let's use the device. I can't wait! The device is supposed to be used inside, but since the daylight isn't too strong today, Let's try it outside. 13 degrees. That fast? It's quite sweet. Yes, it is. And I'm surprised at how easy it was. The average sweetness of a Japanese pear is about 12 degrees. This means that the pear we've measured is fairly sweet. The sweeter fruits are, the better they sell. This is really sweet and tasty. The sweetness of apples, peaches, and mangoes can also be measured. But there are other saccharimeters on the market too, right? Yes, there are. But most of them use liquid extracted from the fruit to measure the sugar content. This is one such device called a refractometer. But to use it, you need to extract the fruit's juice so it's not very convenient for farmers. Meanwhile, large wholesale markets have non-destructive saccharimeters, but the machines are quite large and expensive, making them difficult for farmers to own. The Takumi started searching for a way to easily measure the sugar content without damaging the fruit. I really wanted to come up with a new type of device that would be both compact as well as easy to operate and most importantly, affordable for the average farmer. The Takumi used the conventional non-destructive saccharimeter technology as the basis of its development. In this method, strong light is directed at the fruit. Light at a certain wavelength will penetrate the fruit, but some of that light hits sugar molecules and is absorbed. Due to absorption, the light that finally reaches the receiver has diminished. The sugar content is then measured at the receiver. The Takumi re-examined that approach and developed a whole new method. He uses an LED as a light source and directs the light at sugar molecules near the surface of the fruit. Some light that is directed at the molecules diminishes, then bounces off the surrounding area. He created a system that measures sugar content by catching this light with a highly sensitive silicon sensor. After five years of development, the saccharimeter was largely complete, but there was still another step. Since the device uses a commercial LED, there can be differences in the light's wavelength. Each and every one of the devices needs to be adjusted so as not to have any margin of error. That means fruits are needed to test the device. 
but having fruit with the right consistency on a regular basis is almost impossible. To address this, I succeeded in creating some liquid specimens I could use instead of fresh fruit, but it wasn't easy. The Takumi created the liquid by adding a special combination of fructose with dietary fibers in it, giving it the same condition as real fruit. After setting the special liquid samples and the sacrimeters on a machine and running a few tests, the devices are ready to be sent off to farmers. Now, I'd like to try and look at other aspects of agriculture besides saccharimeters and see if I can develop some other devices that would really help out farmers and make their jobs easier. So this is the new saccharimeter made by the Takumi. It's very compact and light. Let's see if we can measure the sugar content of this apple. So just go like this. Yes, just press the button in the middle for a few seconds. Okay. Oh, there we go. The sugar content of this apple is 13.1. That was very easy. Yes, and this saccharimeter is often used by individual farmers who sell their fruits directly to consumers. The Takumi said that demand for his device is particularly high among younger farmers who want to open their own sales channels by a mail order and the internet. Even though the Takumi examined the conventional approach and developed a new easy-to-use device, I'm sure he faced a different kind of struggle in mass producing his saccharimeter. Yes, thank you very much, Michelle. So, Dr. Tashiro, how would you wrap up today's program? Through exosome research, we are just beginning to understand the language with which organs in the body communicate. When we are able to read their messages, we'll be able to know precisely what's going on in the body. It should also be possible to create new messages to change the situation in the body as well. I'm excited about the new possibilities in medicine that exosome research will bring about in the near future. Thank you, Dr. Tashiro. And that's all for this week's Science View. Thank you for joining us. And see you all again next time.